Hello, everybody. Welcome to Technical Talks. We're back. Um, it's, today is Wednesday, October 4th. I'm Bill Murphy, your host from ASP, Quick Supply, Cascade, and Bowman. Um, here are a few slides. I'll introduce you to our guest speaker, who's a good friend of mine. And uh, we're going to talk with Presto Geo. But before I do that, just going to run through the usual presentation that I do. And I think I locked myself up. There we go. With Hale Holdings. We are family owned. I'm sitting in K Quick Supplies. Uh, original office in Des Moines, Iowa right now. Quick Supply is Hale Holdings owns Quick Supply, ASP Enterprises, Bowman Construction Supply, and Cascade Geosynthetics. And as a civil engineer, I focus primarily on green infrastructure, low impact development, stormwater, but I also help with erosion control, sediment control, roadside, anything that we have that we might need help with, vegetated solutions. Um, we have a lot of sales professionals in all four companies across a good sized part of the United States. And I'm the only engineer. I do uh, technical support in-house for all of our sales folks, training on new products or innovative solutions or new applications, and then also vetting uh, new new products and new technologies that are on the market in our industry. And then finally, I get to do a lot of lunch and learns with friends like Sam, at engineering offices, landscape architects, cities, counties, states. Here's a map that shows where our different offices are located. Um, one of the things we hope that comes out of a technical talks webinar is piques your interest on some things that we maybe didn't dig deep enough for your liking today. Reach out to any of these locations and they can schedule a time for me or Sam or Sam or me to uh, either be with you in person or virtually. We love doing that kind of stuff. Um, we like to remind everybody we've got a whole variety of solutions that we have available. A lot of people know us for one thing or the other, and it's uh, not a week goes by that someone doesn't say, I didn't know you guys also had that. I've uh, been blessed with a lot of hardworking people that work behind the scenes to make us successful. And some of these projects we're seeing where we add value could be we are strategically delivering exactly what's needed, where it's needed, when it's needed, especially on these inner city projects where space is tight and they don't want to leave an excavation open for very long. Uh, we can be work with surgical precision to get what you need when you need it. With and that, Bill, I'm going to my friend I'm Sam. I'm going to stop you for a second. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Sam. Uh, Bill, you're not showing your screen. Oh, my gosh. You didn't see any of that? No. Uh, we're going to start all over. Just kidding. Um, I said share screen, and for some reason, it stopped. What were you seeing on there? Were you seeing anything at all? You. Oh, that's awful. Well, I'll, so I don't know if I've handed controls to you. I don't think I have. So watch this. Here's what you guys missed. You missed that one, 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 that one. Now we're back to Sam. We're caught up. Now I just got to hand controls to you. And like a pro, there we go. You don't even need me anymore. I'm going to mute myself and enjoy the show. I'll interject a few times because you know I can't help myself. Yeah, so <laughs> thanks, Bill. So hi, I'm uh, Sam Justice. I'm going to say hi, and then I'm going to turn my screen off so that you guys can focus on the... Uh, the presentation here. Um, so I am uh, one of the engineers at Presto Geosystems, and today we're going to sort of introduce you and talk to you about um, our stormwater infrastructure solutions that we have, including GeoBlock, GeoPave, and GeoWeb. And so we'll get through all of those um, quickly here. Um, I hate to, oh, there it goes. So like I said, my name is uh, Sam Justice. I am a civil engineer. Uh, hailing from Michigan, but uh, working all over the US now with Presto. Um, so I'm here to help with any sort of technical questions, anything like that that you have. Um, so today we are gonna talk about some of the benefits of using a porous pavement system, uh, both how you can have a rigid and a flexible system and how they perform under varying traffic loading conditions. We're gonna talk about both using both aggregate and vegetated or grass surface solutions for porous pavement and why you might choose one over the other. And then we are actually gonna talk a little bit about how porous pavements are capable of detaining stormwater runoff and helping you achieve some green building goals on your project sites. Um, so if you do have questions, feel free to put them in um, the questions, uh, the Q&A session uh, there, and I will try and uh, answer them as we go along or we'll get to them at the end. Um, so just a little bit about Presto first is we uh, work with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers uh, to develop the GeoCell technology in the late 1970s. And then we've been innovating in the geosynthetics market ever since. And our products are used in over 200 countries and in every state in the U.S. 
So we go beyond simply providing a product, we help you provide a complete project solution. So we do operate in three main product areas. The biggest one is gonna be soil stabilization using our GeoWeb GeoCells. And those can work for load support, slope and channel protection, and constructing green retaining walls. Uh, we are gonna talk about those a little bit also in the context of porous pavements, our second uh, main area. Um, the, these are the rigid ones that can be done in both aggregate and grass surfaces. And then finally, we do have some lightweight reusable construction mats. We're not talking about those today, but if you have questions, always happy to answer. Um, so if you do want any more of that information, you can visit our website at prestogeo.com um, or you can contact me directly. Um, so the first, the natural question is gonna be, why are porous pavements needed and how are they gonna be different than the standard pavement services that you're typically gonna see on site? And there really are a number of great benefits for using a porous pavement for your project. So porous pavements are a class of solutions that address in a cost-effective way regulations that need to be met. So after 40 plus years, the Clean Water Act continues to create the need for stormwater management for both quantity and quality. And most states have developed some non-point pollution regulations with specific targets that need to be met. Local regulations may require even more stringent standards if the project is near a protected wetland or water source. And you know there's a wide variety of things that might be needed. So make sure you are in contact with your local regulators for that sort of thing. But porous pavements are one way to meet these criteria while still performing in a structurally meaningful and long lasting way. So another reason that you may choose to use a porous pavement system is because it is gonna be the best option for your project. Many locations have poor soil conditions because better suited sites are becoming scarce and land is at a premium. And then there's also things like high stormwater management value, which is gonna be the desire to make the best use of that valuable high cost land and reduce the need for stormwater ponds by increasing the porosity of your pavements. Porous pavement systems handle stormwater at the point of impact, percolating that water where it falls and avoiding the need for conveyance pipes or uh, detention channels, anything like that, that might otherwise be necessary. And sustainable solutions are actually really popular with the public nowadays. And because there's a high percentage of recycled materials in some of these products, you're going to have reduced landfilling of those materials, and you're going to have the ability to achieve some green building credits. So there are a couple different types of porous pavement options available that I want to go over really quick. Um, and so I'm sure everybody has seen something like these. These are going to be the more traditional, more well-known options for porous pavements. And that's going to be to use the pervious version of your traditional pavements. That's going to be porous concrete, porous asphalt, and paver blocks. So these type of applications do allow for normal traffic frequency use. And they do have increased infiltration over their non-porous, you know, sort of traditional counterparts. So that can help with your stormwater requirements. Hard surface porous pavements, they do act very similarly to their non-porous counterparts, but they often suffer from durability challenges in the long term. And the big difference between your standard pavement and a hard surface porous pavement is going to be in the cross section. So all three of these types of methods have deeper cross sections than your standard pavement and require what's called a choker or a bedding course between the pavement surface and then your open graded base layer. The choker layer is intended to be both the leveling layer for the surface pavement, ensuring a smooth and properly built surface, and it's also intended to provide the resistance to movement or differential settlement that could potentially damage that surface over time. So it does have an important function, but it can be costly and time consuming to install, and typically, aren't actually very porous. And so I did mention there were those durability challenges. And there are a few other significant drawbacks to using these sort of traditional methods. And cost is going to be one of the biggest factors, both during installation and over the lifetime of the project. During construction, these projects need specialized materials to create the pavement and specialty trained contractors that know how to properly install this type of system. Then there's a lot of long-term maintenance requirements including regular deep cleaning, such as vacuuming and power washing to reduce clogged areas, that, which is going to happen pretty frequently in your high traffic zone, so like your drive lanes of your parking lot. Um, and then you're also going to have to do a lot of resurfacing or replacement of lost material due to raveling. 
Unraveling occurs because there are weak bonds between the material. And you want those weak bonds because that allows for it to be pervious. So it's going to let that water to infiltrate. But drawback is it doesn't hold together very well. And of course, that choker course that we just talked about, it actually does impede the water flow, reducing the infiltration capacity of the system and leading to more ponding at the surface. So it makes it so you can build the road using a porous concrete, but it really doesn't actually last very long because of it. So with that, we obviously wanted to find a way to fix some of those issues and get a better way moving forward. So we offer two types of porous pavement systems, a flexible using the GeoWeb system and then rigid options to best fit your needs. So instead of adaptations of existing pavements, our solutions are designed from the ground up to function as porous pavements. So we are gonna start with the rigid systems. Um, so we have two different types uh, that differ with what type of surface they're gonna use, topsoil with vegetation or gravel for a stone surface. So the rigid porous pavement systems are going to work well with both options. It's going to be really up to you to decide what you need on your site. And the biggest difference between the two, besides how they look, obviously, is going to be the amount of vehicle traffic that they're able to withstand. With a vegetated system, vehicle traffic should be occasional. Think only a few times a week at most. This is because really no matter how great the system grass just doesn't like to be driven on. Too much time getting crushed under cars will kill the grass no matter what you do. So the system itself would still work even if the grass wasn't there, but you're not going to have that nice green lawn you might have been hoping for. So if your pavement is planning on seeing daily use, such as a, a parking lot, aggregate infill is going to be the way to go. And so we call it non-bound aggregate because there are no glues, no resins, no binders that are needed to hold the stone together, just the actual paver unit itself. Um, and so, like I said, there are two paver units available depending on what infill is. So the first one is going to be the vegetated system, and we call it geoblock. The geoblock system is that rigid porous paver unit, meaning that the panels are not meant to twist or bend. The rigid nature means that there's going to be a thinner cross section possible, and it's a stronger system compared to systems that are made of textiles or those traditional pavements like a porous concrete. An important aspect of the geoblock units is going to be the large amount of open space at the bottom of each cell that you can see in that photo, which allows for full root penetration of your grass. So the surface is, is going to be thick and uniform. And the grass or the cells are filled with topsoil and then vegetated so that grass grows above the cell walls so that you don't actually see any of the plastic material. And then the pavers, paver unit itself, itself, excuse me, protects the root zones from the, the car tires so you're not immediately crushing the roots. And that's what allows you to have, you know, that infrequent traffic over it without killing the grass. And then we also have our aggregate system. It's called GeoPave. And so I know that those names are similar. There's GeoBlock, which is vegetated, and GeoPave, which is aggregate. So I'm going to try and uh, keep that separate as I'm going forward, but hopefully it doesn't cause too much confusion. So the GeoPave aggregate units are similar in that they are the same rigid paver characteristics, characteristics, um, but they do have specific features needed for the performance with a stone infill. And the main difference that I want to highlight is going to be the monolithic mesh bottom. And so you can see that in the photo here. It's that grid along the bottom of the unit. This is a molded in-place mesh on the underside of the unit rather than those large openings. And it's intended to keep the stone infill from migrating underneath the unit. And that integrated nature assists in the overall rigidity of the paver unit. And so this lattice bottom spreads the load similar to a snowshoe so that the wheel loads don't create ruts due to the high volume of traffic. These units were designed specifically to work with the different types of infill material to give you the best possible pavement section for your needs. And so we do also offer a flexible pavement system with the GeoWeb GeoCells. Um, and so I'd, hopefully some of you have all heard of what a GeoCell is before. Um, I'm gonna go through it really quickly here, but um, basically the flexible porous pavement allows for the same type of vehicle loads that the porous, that the rigid paver units have, but it's typically going to require a deeper cross-section to carry those heavy loads. 
but the flexible nature of the GWEB system can be beneficial for areas with potential for settlement, such as in a wetland area. Um, so the GWEB system, like I said, is going to be similar to the rigid systems in that it's going to hold and confine your material in place to create a drivable surface. And the difference between a flexible and a rigid system is that with rigid systems, you're driving directly on the paver unit itself, while with the flexible system, you're driving on the infill material. So it's much more important to choose a higher quality material when implementing a flexible system. You obviously aren't going to get ruts from a rigid system. That plastic is going to resist any sort of rutting that happens. Um, but you're actually not going to get ruts with a flexible system either. The GEO panels create a platform for the vehicles to drive on. And by holding that material in place, ruts and wheel wells aren't going to form. And so the GeoWeb system is our version of GeoCell technology, if you've heard of that in uh, some of your other works. And it consists of two main attributes. So the first is going to be the cell or the container size. Um, and the cell comes in three diameters, small, medium, and large, and it has cell heights between three and 12 inches. And so the dimensions that you're going to use are going to depend on your project details and your vehicle loading requirements. And we can help you determine what is going to be the most appropriate for any one specific job. There is no you know, one right answer. There's going to be something that's going to be most tailored to what you're actually trying to accomplish. Um, and something that I want to point out is going to be our ultrasonically welded seam. And that's where all of the connecting points are. And it's really important to how the function of a geocell works for a flexible porous pavement system. Basically, the stronger the seam, the better the performance that the geocell is going to have. A strong seam allows for the use of heavier infill material and better overall lifetime performance. The GeoWeb is produced using a high quality virgin high density polyethylene resin and HDPE. Um, and so this is, allows for those consistently strong welds, welds at cell junctions. Um, and so you basically doesn't, you don't wanna have any sort of um, fillers or polymers or alloy blends, anything, you know, fancy and, and uh, you know, proprietary sounding that people try and throw in their products just to, uh, you know, try and make them unique. You really want to go with the tried and true method. We've been doing this for 40 plus years and we really have um, figured out really the best way of doing it. And it doesn't involve, uh, you know, trying to reinvent the wheel, basically. That's a good time to say that um, there's some Me Too products globally that might look like your product, but they absolutely do not perform like your product. So I, I caution people to specify the correct product so they don't get uh, junk. Yeah, so I, I, I will say, um, you know, we're not the only people on the GeoCell market. Um, and uh, I'm pretty sure everybody has gotten a Chinese knockoff of something in their life. And there are unfortunately... Um, some knockoff products of our GeoWeb out there um, that really, I, I just want to say they do not perform. Um, they're not going to, to last long. They're not going to be able to support the same vehicle weights. Um, so I really do urge you if, you, if you see something out there and it looks a little hokey, maybe uh, really try and do your research because um, there are products that work and they're definitely our products that don't. <laughs> and a plug for both of us is on that specification work is we don't carry the junk. We don't carry any junk. So if they specify it on their engineered plans, they've got to do spec defense when a contractor tries to value engineer it and come up with something cheaper. Thanks, Sam. Absolutely. Okay. So um, the second sort of main option or main thing about a geocell is that you can choose what your infill material is. And so you actually can choose between having a stone of grass vegetated surface or even concrete. Um, we're not gonna talk about concrete today because that's not porous pavement systems. Um, there are some uses for concrete, um, definitely less common though than using a stone surface. Having the stone is really nice because it does allow for that free water movement, allows it to be that porous, uh, porous pavement system that we're all looking for. So you have options, you have different things you can choose. Stone is probably going to be the most common and the most useful for supporting your vehicle loads. And we do have our specifications, like Bill just mentioned, spec defense is a big deal, something that we strongly urge engineers and contractors and project owners to really hold to um, so that you do get products that work 
Uh, we are fully certified both in the United States and uh, throughout the world as our products meeting and exceeding all of the standards that we have on our specification that a lot of the knockoffs just don't. Um, so if you do have any questions about that sort of thing, feel free to reach out. Uh, it can get very technical very quickly, but we are more than happy to go over it with you if you do have any questions. So one other thing we like to mention, um, definitely is becoming a lot more pervasive and people are asking questions, is things that are going to harm your environment. And so one of the first ones is microplastics. We're hearing about microplastics showing up everywhere and it's horrible and I have no idea what the solution is going to be to get them out of our environment, but we definitely don't want to be adding any more. And so the GeoWeb and the GeoPave aggregate system and the GeoBlock vegetated system all will not produce microplastics. So they are made from high stability inert materials. That's that high density polyethylene. It is a chemically inert material. So it is not going to degrade. It's not going to leach and it's not going to release microplastics into your environment. Um, and basically, because it has no fillers or polymers or basically compatible stabilizers, anything that could potentially uh, have that degradation over time, you don't have to worry about having those microplastics or releasing harmful chemicals, anything like that into your environment. So while it does seem like, you know, we're trying to avoid putting plastic in the environment, this is a great way of doing that without uh, releasing any of those chemicals, you're not going to damage your crown water system, anything like that. I'm and thrilled you've included this, Sam. That's been a big deal for us with all of our geosynthetics and geotextiles. And I just put an article in our newsletter last month saying that not all plastics are created equal, that there's a real push for some um, agencies to say no plastic. But the fact is, <laughs> Uh, that's not the way we should go about it. We should say no bad plastics, no junk, nothing that's going to uh, degrade or leach, as you said. But in order to be sustainable, sometimes a plastic solution is the best solution. So there's a lot of education out there, and you're right at the front of it. So thank you. Yeah, so it's definitely something to keep in mind. And remember that we're all going to see uh, other environmental applications, such as geomembranes, um, environmental barriers, I mean, your standard silt fencing that you're going to see on construction sites, those are all made of that plastic as well. And the important thing is to make sure that they are made of good quality materials. Um, and that's what our HDPE is. It's a strong, chemically inert material. It's not going to leach. It's not going to degrade. It's not going to release microplastics. So like Bill said, we're not trying to eliminate plastic. We're trying to eliminate bad plastics. Um, and one more thing, um, PFAS, those uh, the forever chemicals that we're all hearing about now, um, are definitely a concern. And I can say that uh, our materials, all of our materials are uh, PFAS compliant with all federal regulations. And part of that is that inert stability of the HDPE material. So it's not leaching those PFAS chemicals. It's not releasing them into the groundwater system. It's not showing up in your, your topsoil if you were maybe near some sort of um, cropland. Um, and throughout the entire manufacturing process, PFAS chemicals are contained and not released anywhere. So it's nice to know if you are um, having any of those sort of environmental regulations or environmental questions on your projects, um, the GeoWeb, GeoBlock, and GeoPave materials are all compliant with that. And then one more thing um, about compliance, uh, if I can click back, there we go. Um, so all of our products are made in the USA. So including sourcing our resin all the way through manufacturing, all of our products are made in the USA. And that is gonna become a lot more important in the future with a lot of the federal infrastructure money that's come out of the infrastructure bill, um, especially in the next two to three years, we're gonna see a lot of those projects starting to come through. So if you do have federal money in your project, if you're military, if you're with any of the, the letter agencies, DOTs, um, you know, anything like that, all of our materials are made in the USA and they are Build America, Buy America compliant. And so that's definitely something, if you hold to that, you're going to avoid getting a lot of those knockoff, uh, sort of not as good, uh, poor, poor performance uh, competitors. So all just sort of things to keep in mind. Definitely happy to talk about it, provide, uh, you know, resources, information, anything like that that you might have. Okay, so 
Um, one of the last things that we like to show is about cost comparison, um, especially if these are newer technologies to you, if it's not something that you've really used before, cost is always a huge component of it. You know, no one's getting away from that. No one's thinking it's not important. And so this is just a quick little schematic showing uh, the use with the GWeb system, how it gives you both a thinner cross-section and overall can cost less, especially if you're able to use on-site materials. So if you don't need to truck in specifically engineered stone, if you were to use, say, recycled materials from your project site, you can definitely save a lot of money that way. So this is something uh, just to keep in mind, thinner cross-sections, lower material cost, lower overall cost overall. So all good things there. Um, so let's go over some benefits of porous pavement systems. We're gonna go through this really quick. Um, I, none of this should be too surprising. Um, so one of them, the biggest one is gonna be stormwater infiltration and stormwater retention. And so using any of our products, uh, GeoBlock, GeoPave, GeoWeb, all allow for fast infiltration directly at the point of contact. So where the rainwater hits, it can flow freely down. And then it can also retain that water within the cross section. And so that's usually helpful if you are over like a clay soil, something that doesn't allow for fast infiltration into the groundwater system. Being able to retain the water within the cross section of your porous pavement still allows you to capture that water, avoid ponding or runoff at the surface, and allow it to slowly, naturally infiltrate into your groundwater system. And it does help uh, to have a porous pavement uh, collect that water as opposed to having it flow uh, directly onto the groundwater system because it helps keep the, the topsoil loose if you're using a vegetated system and it helps keep the stone in place if you're using an aggregate system. Uh, you can also potentially uh, reduce the need for above ground stormwater containment facilities such as detention ponds. If you're able to capture and store that stormwater within the cross section of your porous pavement, you don't need to collect it and transfer it through a detention pond. Um, how much water you need to be able to store at any given time versus how deep your cross section is, is gonna be a little bit of calculus that you need to do to determine if you do need any sort of above ground systems. But it is a great way if you are limited on space and you don't wanna give up a big chunk of your land to having have detention ponds, potentially do a porous pavement, store that groundwater underground, win-win on both sides. Um, like I said, uh, the rigid porous pavers, so your geo block with vegetate system and geo pave with stone are rigid. And so they do have that high rigidity paver strength. And basically it means that you can have a thinner overall cross section because you're keeping the strength at the surface. You don't need a really thick base of stone to uh, pre prevent wheel ruts or you know, sunken drive lanes, anything like that. And so the units themselves are actually strong enough to drive on when they're unfilled. So you're actually driving on the plastic paver unit itself, not the infill material. So that also helps with uh, you know, going for the installation process makes it faster and easier. So if a thin cross section is important, going with the rigid units is gonna be the way to go. Um, and so we just want to sort of keep that in mind that the strength of the system is actually in the unit itself. One of the sort of cool things that you can do with a porous pavement system is tree root protection. And so this happens by reducing the stress that's transferred to the soil by your vehicle traffic. Um, so basically by laying these systems over buried tree roots, you can get a lot closer to tree trunks than you normally would be able to with just driving on non-paved surfaces. And you're reducing the pressure or the stress that's putting the pressure on those tree roots, which would potentially damage them, kill the trees, that sort of thing. If you have trees that need to stay in place, these systems are a great way to still get your vehicle access. And this one was actually the GeoPave system using a stone driveway and then it allowed it to keep all of this nice existing vegetation around. Um, then there was another one, this project was actually over in London where a building needed to expand their parking area, but they had no dig restrictions at the site because they had uh, trees that they needed to keep in place and they didn't wanna have any potential damage to those tree roots. So you can actually place the GeoPave system, or the, in case you need this, this one was GeoWeb, you can place it directly on 
the natural existing ground. You don't need to do any excavation. You, so no earthwork necessary, that sort of thing. And it's also a great option if you have shallow utilities or are concerned about anything really that might be in the ground that you could potentially damage. It's a great solution because it doesn't in interfere with anything below grade. So definitely a nice little benefit to that. Sam, I was going to interject if I could on the tree one. Yeah. Um, we have some projects now that we're looking at in some other cities, and I'll, I'll continue to work with you on this, where for new construction, we're able to put in some of the soil vault systems. Like for us, it's City Green Strata Vault. And I'm talking to some people about putting some of the Presto products above them, even for occasional traffic, like for parks and maintenance or festivals or carnivals, where they don't necessarily think they'll drive on it very often, not enough to pave it or even to rock it, but to protect those trees so the trees don't, the roots don't get suffocated and stunt the growth of the tree or heaven forbid, kill it. Um, we're talking about using your products to disperse that load, just as you said, and protect those tree roots. So there's a lot of creative solutions where these can be applied. So thanks. Good job. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so some other things, uh, good benefits about the rigid system are going to be torsional loading resistance. So that's going to be that turning movement as your vehicle tires are moving. Um, so the strength of the rigid pavers actually resist that torsional uh, movement. So they're not going to bend, they're not going to tear or rip or anything like that. So you can really have those cars do, you know, starting, stopping, turning full car movement without worrying about damaging the systems. Um, then you can also have landscape and hard pavement integration. The screen didn't change. Um, but basically with both the flip, flexible and rigid pavers, you can align them with the existing asphalt or other pavements that you might have. Um, in this case, this was actually a car dealership um, that wanted a pavement addition. Um, so the uh, units basically exist or are cut to fit right up against that existing asphalt pavement. Um, and so what it can do is it can actually capture the water runoff from that asphalt pavement into the porous pavement cross section um, and allow for that stormwater capture and infiltration into the ground without needing to have additional stormwater capture because they're, you're not adding more hard surface to your, your area, you're adding a porous surface. So that's definitely something to consider if you are at your hard surface limit on your project site, adding a porous pavement is a great way to get more driving or parking areas without going over that line. Um, and then you also have just some, uh, you know, aesthetic appeal. So with the geo block vegetated system, you see it on the left, it is intended to hide the plastic material and just be a nice green lawn. And that way you can have sort of it hidden. You don't necessarily need to know that it's there, but it's great for, you know, emergency access if you need it. And then with the geo pave aggregate system, you see it on the right, you are actually intended to see the plastic unit. So it's a built up in sort of a, a herringbone pattern. So it looks like paver blocks. So you would place the stone in there and level it off to the top of the unit. So you still see all those plastic units. Um, and so you're gonna have that sort of paver block aesthetic, but you can also vary the stone color like in this photo um, so that you can still have um, some delineation if you want to. You can also meet your green initiatives using these. Um, especially if you're going for things like lead credits, having forest pavements is a great way to do that. Um, and if you do have those hard surfaces limits in your landscaping plans, this is a great way to uh, you know, avoid having to go over your limits or requesting more from your regulators. Um, they're pretty easy to construct. They all have good constructability benefits. Like I said, probably the biggest one is that you can drive on them when they're unfilled and you can do both rubber tire and tracked equipment so you're not limited in the type of equipment you can use on the site. So it's really great if you need to get these systems in the ground quickly. You don't need to wait for cure times. You don't need sequence construction limits. So you can really keep things moving. Um, and then they are really low maintenance. Um, you don't need to do any of those vacuuming or unclogging that your porous concrete or porous asphalt might need. And you don't need to constantly be replacing the stone. You're not going to be losing a lot of the stone over time that you'd have to come back and keep putting new stone in. Um, and so you can basically just place it and forget about it. You can also do some customization. We have uh, what we call um, our, our blocks here that go in there. And so you can make parking lines, that sort of thing. Um, 
So you can add in uh, parking stops, any sort of thing to help sort of customize your system as well. And then one of the great things is they can be for emergency access. And this is sort of where the geoblock vegetated system shines, is that it can just look like a regular lawn. You can walk over it. It's ADA compliant, so you can have wheelchairs, crutches, high heels, everything walk over it, no issue. And then if you need to, you can have heavy equipment or emergency vehicles come over it. So in this case, it was actually at a university. And so this was uh, between a couple of buildings. So they had this nice walking path people could go on, but with the geo block units in between there filled in with vegetation, they could run a fire truck, um, they could go ambulances, anything like that. So they could have emergency access to some of their buildings without needing to have paved surfaces all the way through. Um, let's see, so we're gonna start doing a couple case studies. That's what everybody really likes, uh, really wants to see these things going actually into the ground, making sure they really work. So we're gonna start with the geo web system. So this was an interesting project. It was a community-based project and it really shows the ease and versatility of the geo web system. Um, so this was a uh, local quarry that had fully been depleted. So the residents of Brandywine, Maryland actually seized the opportunity, bought the closed quarry and had it redeveloped as a community solar farm. Um, so uh, with as with a lot of these type of projects, you have really poor soil conditions. And so you really need to have that sort of proactive approach to construction and operation of a solar farm. Um, so things like erosion control, stormwater management, and site access really have to be considered for long-term project success. Um, so the local energy company reached out to us at Presto Geosystems directly to try and come up with our solution. And they chose the GeoWeb load support system with a vegetated infill so that it would have this nice permeable access road into the solar farm. And so with some on-site support from ourselves and our local distributors, uh, the workers were able to install about 40,000 square feet of GWEB cells um, to create this unpaved, uh, porous pavement road. Um, and so this was sort of the overhead immediately after they finished the install. So you don't actually see the GWEB panels at all. Um, and given a little bit of time, this vegetation is going to start growing through. So you're going to have the sort of nice green area all around your solar panels, but it can support any sort of you know, maintenance trucks, emergency vehicles, anything that needs to come on site, including all the way up to, like I said, emergency vehicles, which are Ashto H20 load rated. So that's basically anything that can safely drive on a highway can drive on the G web system once it's installed. Um, and it's great because you don't actually have to wait for the grass to go in. You can see they've already started driving on it. Um, you can just let that grass grow over time, but start using your system immediately. Um, and then we'll go with the geo pave system. So remember, this is the stone rigid system. I know all the names are really similar, so I hope you're uh, able to keep track. Um, but this is just a pretty typical cross section. The unit itself is two inches thick. And then whether or not you need an open graded base is going to depend on how soft your subgrade is, how heavy vehicle loads are, and whether or not you want to be able to capture more stormwater. Um, but so you can have a little bit of variation in your overall cross section. So this gives you sort of an idea, really basic, excuse me, really basic idea of what type of cross section you might be looking for. So the maximum cross section that's necessary is a six inch base with a two inch uh, geopave unit on top. So eight inches total. And that's for very weak soils and very heavy vehicle loads. So that combination. The stronger your subgrade soil or the weaker or the lighter vehicles that you're going to drive, the thinner that cross section can be overall. Um, so one thing we want to point out is there are plastic sec, uh, geo or plastic porous pavements that market themselves very similar to the rigid system, but they're really not. Um, so basically they are based, they're these little plastic rings that are then connected by really tiny thin strips of plastic, but they come rolled like a geosynthetic would. So like a non-woven geotextile comes on a big roll. These rolled systems are available. They're out there. They do not actually stand up. Um, so you can see a couple really simple failures. Um, they have no torsional loading resistance. So the second you put a car over and try and turn the tire, they're just gonna rip apart. 
Um, they have no ability to stop the stone from migrating underneath them. So that's what this uplift is. So you're just going to get bumps and, and cracking and all sorts of bad things. And that's with something as light as golf carts. Imagine trying to drive any sort of heavier vehicle on there. You're not going to get there. So it's just another one of those things where it's like, you want to keep in mind what product you're actually buying, why you're buying it, what you're hoping to accomplish and don't just go with the cheapest thing that exists. Can I chime in with you, Sam, again? Yeah. Um, we're under tremendous pressure at our company, and I've been with us for nine years to consider these because people say, oh, man, they're so much cheaper than what you have. Um, and, and it comes on a roll, and I can just roll it out and do it myself. And they're not actually a lot cheaper than what we have, uh, especially when you consider the total project. And even more important, when you consider callbacks. One of the challenges that I have, and you do too, Sam, is – trying to go back against um, anybody with a bad experience. So yeah. let's somebody say somebody used one of these rolled products and they saw it come back up. And I've been to some alleys and restaurants where I've seen this go down and then I've gone back and visited a year or two or three later. And I've seen where it's come up and sure enough, somebody will say, see, this is why we don't use those plastic things. And they try to lump them all together. This is where education is important. I'm happy to do a lunch and learn with engineering firms, landscape architects, city, county, state, federal government. I'm happy to do pre-bid and pre-construction with contractors to make sure that not only do they know the difference between the products, but that proper installation. So education is really important here. That's why this webinar is good. But that no torsional loading, you're absolutely right. If it's so flimsy and weak that it can just be unrolled, then you know it's not going to be really strong and rigid by itself. It's going to be basically, like you said, any kind of a rolled fabric or any other rolled product. You'd have to be very careful installing it correctly, but then you'd also have to use it in the right place where you didn't exceed its performance rating. And I really do urge anybody who is questioning or interested in this to reach out to Bill and have him come see you directly because you will see immediately upon, upon touching any of these materials, the difference between these rolled systems and our rigid systems I am not a strong person. I can rip these rolled systems apart by hand. That's why I don't carry them. That's why I don't promote them. I don't promote <laughs> them at all. So just keep in mind, there are inferior products out there on the market. And we really want to try and avoid having you guys get something that's going to give you a bad experience. That's the, that's the overall idea. Um, so I can get this going again. Quick case study about the GeoPave system. So this was a cell phone tower and substation. Um, and so one of the great things about this was that it was actually on a slight hill. So there was going to be a lot of stormwater runoff that the uh, utility didn't want to have to manage. They didn't want to have to capture that stormwater runoff because it was on their uh, cell, phone cell phone tower pad. Um, and so they really wanted to keep those maintenance requirements low, have limited construction area, and there was really nowhere that they could collect that stormwater. Um, and so because this was more about stormwater detention, they actually had a really deep base. They had nine inches of stone underneath the geopave units themselves. It was able to hold over three inches of water during a storm event, allowing that to then infiltrate into the groundwater system. And they had only standard lightweight equipment used, just pretty much a bobcat and people carrying these out by hand. Um, and they had no prior experience to installing, and they were able to get an installation rate of about 1,200 square feet a day, um, including bringing and placing all of the stone. So it's really quick, easy to install. Um, don't let it intimidate you just because it's new. Um, and so what we have are called our U-clip connectors. And so these are the connectors to hold each individual panel together. Um, it's really apparent where they're going to need to be placed. Um, and like we said, small connectors or small equi equipment is all that you really need to do this. Um, you don't need specialized equipment. You don't need specialized materials. And really, other than Bill coming out, giving you, you know, 20 minutes of a pep talk, you don't need a lot of training. So it's really nice to have that, you know, not needing any sort of uh, specialized material. And then here's what it looks like after all of the installation was done. Um, and because of that stormwater re retention in the base, they didn't need anything else to collect stormwater. They didn't need a detention pond. They didn't need channels, nothing like that. So it's really great if you do not have any space to spare. Um, so this was that great compromise between function and environmental concerns. Um, and then this is actually 
coming back to the site about three years later. Um, so it still looks good. It's still performing well. There's not a lot of maintenance required. Um, I know it's always a concern for people in areas where it can snow, um, but for basic maintenance tips, um, in the fall, you're going to want to keep um, organics off of it. So if there are fallen leaves, you want to just either blow or brush those away because you don't want that those leaves decomposing on the top. That is going to create sort of a barrier to your infiltration. And then for snowy areas, you can actually still do snow plowing. Um, because it's porous, you might want to avoid um, salts or chemical de-icers because those will, you know, melt and then leach into your groundwater system. We're typically trying to avoid that. So um, you can do things like sand to try and create grit to help keep your, your area drivable, or you can snow plow or shovel. Um, so typically we just say, if you are gonna snow plow, put one of those rubber boot blades, blade boots on the bottom of your snow shovel so that you don't have the metal impacting um, the plastic units. That's really all you need, otherwise shovel as normal. So it is definitely able to be maintained and used in cold weather environments. Uh, just get get uh, you know your normal crews out there to maintain it and you'll be good to go. If you do have more questions about that, I know people always do because it is a big concern, please feel free to reach out. We have uh, answered these questions a lot in the past. We have We have some good resources. Okay, so last thing is the GeoBlock vegetated system. Um, so it's going to look really similar to what we just saw where you have the geoblock system. It's going to be on top of a base if you need it, whether that's because you have heavy vehicles or you want that stormwater, and then on top of your natural ground. Um, again, we have the idea of um, what your base requirement might be. Could potentially be a little thicker. Probably not, though. So again, uh, there's that you know little bit of calculus in determining what your total cross section is. This is something that I help with myself and the rest of the engineering team here at Presto. We give uh, our recommendations for these sorts of things. We're not going to just say you know here's the product, you figure it out, good luck. We do actually help you determine what's going to be appropriate for your site. Um, and there are rolled products for this as well. Um, and I just want to highlight. Um, they don't actually allow the use of topsoil as the infill. You have to fill in with sand because sand can support vehicle loads in the way that topsoil can't, but sand does not support vegetation. So you're going to get that yellow, dry, cracked grass, and then it's going to just die and look horrible. And what is even the point of that? So quick case study for that as well. One that I like to sort of highlight is a small residential project. These don't only have to go on big construction sites. These can be used for just small projects. And so this was actually one where a homeowner wanted to create some additional parking spaces for their guests, but they'd run out of room for a traditional driveway. And so they brought in the geoblock system because this whole area was actually their house's septic field. So that's why they weren't parking on it before because parking on a septic field is not a good idea for a wide variety of reasons. Some of them very, very ugly and disgusting. So because they were able to do all of the work themselves, they didn't need to really spend a whole lot. They didn't need to take a lot of time. Um, they didn't put a base in. They weren't worried about collecting stormwater. They just wanted to support and protect their septic field. They filled it back in with their local topsoil. Um, you know, so they were able to do it all themselves basically just parking passenger vehicles on there, you know, your standard car and pickup truck. They're not looking to support highway vehicle loads here. Um, and so this was a great way to do that. And they decided to hydro seed it themselves, good for them, um, but you don't have to hydro seed. You can just put regular grass seed down, a little bit of fertilizer and water it, wait for that grass to come in. Um, and it's important to say the actual grass type you use is not important to the function of the geo block. You wanna use what's gonna be local to your area and grow in your climate. You know, Kentucky bluegrass is not gonna grow in Oregon. So, you know, pick what's gonna grow in your area and that's gonna be the most important thing. The strength of the geo block panels themselves is what's supporting your vehicle traffic, not the vegetation. Um, and then here's what it looks like. So you can see they're mowing it just like normal. You can get your, your cars and your pickup trucks on there. You're protecting your septic field. You're still allowing for that water infiltration. So this was a great sort of two birds, one stone 
scenario for a homeowner that they did all themselves. So just a little fun thing to highlight. Um, and then this was another project. It was actually up in Michigan, uh, but this was uh, for a powwow grounds for at an Indian reservation, which we think is pretty cool. But the whole idea is that the ground is this really soft clay. It's completely undrivable on its own. They had to do something to reinforce it. And because it was this na natural area, it was out in nature, they really wanted to avoid having to put an asphalt or a concrete surface in. So they put all of these in themselves. Again, you can see there isn't even a base needed, so it's a nice thin cross section. You're able to do this herringbone pattern for the bi-directional traffic, so that's your starting, turning, stopping, moving trailers, all sorts of good stuff. Uh, and then you just fill it in again with that local topsoil, let it start growing. Uh, but again, you can drive on it without the grass. So they filled it all in with topsoil here. They can immediately start using it. So that you don't have to worry about waiting for the grass to grow because, you know, you put it in late in the season and grass isn't going to grow until next year. Oh, my goodness. Nope. Start using it immediately. So a couple uh, sort of little plugs for myself. We do offer complimentary project evaluations. And so that's what, sort of what I was saying earlier. Myself and the rest of the engineering team are going to help you determine which one of these products are gonna be the best, what cross section is gonna be the best for your specific project. There is no one right size. There's definitely a lot of flexibility, a lot of variation in the things that I've been saying. Um, so we're gonna help you determine what's gonna be best for you to meet your specific project needs and meet your local regulations. Um, and a new plug, we do have a new web-based software, Presto GOP3 where you can plan your projects yourself within this online portal. So the software does offer a suite of geotechnical calculation tools designed to support engineers, contractors, and project owners in completing some value engineering evaluations using GeoWeb GeoCells and GeoBlock and GeoPave Porous Pavements. And you can check that out at prestogeop3.com. Um, it's a pretty cool software. I urge you to use it. Um, if you do have any questions, you can submit them through that website and they come to me or you can just come to me directly. Um, so just a quick summary, uh, we have covered the GeoPave aggregate and the GeoBlock vegetated ridges porous pavements as well as the flexible GeoWeb system. We saw some advantages they have over your traditional hard surface pavements. You got stormwater management, high vehicle load capabilities, aesthetic aggregate or in vegetated infill, all some great options to use. Um, they can be used for really heavy vehicle loads, they can be used in the winter, they can be used at you know environmentally sensitive sites, all sorts of good things. Um, just another highlight that we do deliver quality and have over 40 years of expertise. We guarantee every shipment of our materials meets or exceeds our specifications so that you can deliver certainty and build with materials that you can trust. We have no disclaimers, we have no concerning fine print. We are made in America, so you don't have to worry about any sort of cheap knockoff from us. And that is my presentation. Thank you for listening to me uh, talk very quickly. Um, my present, my contact info is here and then I will send it back to Bill and hopefully he'll put his contact info up uh, and I will be happy to answer any questions. I will, Sam, that is awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> you, you are the consummate professional, even though you might not think so some days. Um, you got us done right on time. Uh, just here's our contact information, it's the same. I'm mentioning this because uh, I do the same intro and closing on all of our webinars. At one point, we talked about maybe I would quit doing that. But I tell you, over the three plus years we've been doing this, we get um, a lot of different attendees who maybe we have a lot of regulars. We have dozens of regulars who attend every month, which is great. Thank you all. But we get a lot of new people, too. So we want to make sure we share this information with them. And a reminder, all of these webinars are on our YouTube channel. You can find us on uh, YouTube under ASP Enterprises, and that covers all four companies. But all of these webinars we've done, we've done over 30 of them in the past three plus years. But Sam, none of them have had more registrants than yours today. You had 221 registrants. That's the highest number we've had. So hats off to you. You're a big draw. And your company has a great global reputation. We talked about having Buy America, Build America products but we also have a company that has global experience. Our customers cannot find a climate that you have not had Presso Geo products in. 
Um, just a reminder, folks, you can use this QR code to register for next month's webinar. That'll be Concrete Canvas. We're getting a lot of action with that in Colorado on a lot of our letdown channels. Um, so just click the QR code. And I will tell you, um, I'm going to end with Sam's slide on here because I'm so grateful for her. Uh, the survey you're all going to get, especially if you've never done this before, you're going to get an email from Madeline Kreitler at our office. And it's going to include a little survey just to make sure we have the right information for you. You're not signing up for anything. We're not selling your information. We're going to use it to make sure that you're invited to all of our webinars. We're going to make sure that you have access to our monthly newsletter. And we're going to make sure that any of our email blasts, which we're not, we don't do them very often. We do them strategically that you're invited to conferences. We're going to be at seek us out. If you see Presto Geosystems, at a conference, go to their booth and talk to them. If Sam's there, great. If not, tell them, tell them you know her. Uh, they would be happy to engage with you. There's nothing like putting your hands on their products. Like she said, you can feel the difference. If you put Presto Geo products in your hand, you can definitely feel the difference. With that, I've never seen more Q&As and hands up um, in, a, in a webinar before. Thank you, uh, Lee, Reed, everyone else that said you couldn't see me or see my slides. Sorry about that. Uh, I think we fixed that. My friend Michael Sharp always asks great questions. Sam, do you have a couple minutes you can help us answer ask answer them? Absolutely. Um, we won't get to them all, but here's the other deal. With that survey you're sending out, folks, you're going to get a PDH certificate for a free one professional development hour for continuing education. And we're going to capture all of these Q&A questions and answers. And Sam and I will uh, write answers to those. So when we send the email back, you'll have your PDH certificate. You'll have the written Q&A. And then you'll also have, um, if we want to add any attachments, either from Sam or from us, we'll add that in there along with your PDH certificate. So Sam with the GeoPay, she, he, uh, my buddy's asking, how often do the tops of the paver unit become visible given the twisting tire traffic and constant traffic? Um, he's talking about the GeoPave filled with rock. Uh, is there any concern with that? Yeah, so with the GeoPave aggregate system, the top is intended to be visible from day one. Yep. Uh, so you're not supposed to overfill all of that. You are supposed to have it be level with the top so that you see that uh, plastic material. That's why it's sort of in the paver block aesthetic. Um, and that is because, like you said, if it was overfill, if it was that loose stone, as soon as you start driving on it, that loose stone is going to get pushed away and you would see the plastic anyway. Right. So um, you will see the plastic with the stone infill. That's fine. It's meant to be like that, and it's going to hold up against the torsional loading. That way, you're not going to have to worry about it bending or twisting or tearing. And Michael's a creative guy. He's a landscape designer. Um, and with he's a, he's really he thinks outside the box. But he was asking if it's overdoing it using GeoCell on non-vehicular pedestrian pathways. And I can answer you that's definitely not overdoing it because a lot of uh, multi-use recreation trails get rutting, they get abused, and they need to be resurfaced constantly or they become a hazard with potholes. Um, they become hazard with mucky areas or you could get stuck or whatever. But Sam, you can chime in on that as well. You see it often, don't you? We do. It's actually really common. And it's a great way um, using either geocells or the rigid paver units to get ADA compliant trails. So by using any of our products, you are confining that stone. You're making it a smooth surface that is going to be good for wheelchairs, uh, good for walkers, good for, you know, anything like that. Um, so if you are looking for that sort of thing, definitely not overkill. And it's also great, like Bill said, you know, pavement or uh, trails get degraded just as easily as pavement, um, especially if you have bikes and maybe horses and people, you know, you're going to have your your gators out there doing maintenance can still degrade and the GeoWeb or GeoPave systems are a great way to reduce that maintenance. Well, that's awesome. And we're really close to the end. So I think we'll do one more. Um, I feel like I'm favoring Michael, but he asked, um, did you use paint on some of those um, images that you have? If so, what kind of paint or what did you use for striping? Yeah, so you can paint on top of the GeoPave system. Um, and that would just be your standard road paint. You don't need anything special. Or you can use, we do have molded plastic um uh, colored blocks that you can snap into the units themselves to create striping as well. Um, paint potentially has the 
uh, the chance to degrade, um, especially as you're driving over it, paint always is gonna, gonna get torn up eventually. So using those molded plastic units is a, a little bit longer way to do it, but standard road paint. That's awesome. And my buddy Reed asked a question that we're going to answer in writing because we're out of time. And that's going to be about um, infiltration. When we mentioned infiltration with a cellular system versus just compacted rock, uh, he wants to know if there's some data available for that that he could use. We will answer all those other questions we didn't get to. Thank you, guys. You're a wonderful audience. Uh, we're going to be done. Wrap it up. But Sam, thank you very much. I'm glad your kid's feeling better. And I appreciate you, you doing this. I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Absolutely. Have a good day, everyone.